Today we're going to take you on a tour of a 1967 Amphicar. Wait a minute, that's just a model. Let's look at the real car and describe its real features. This car was one of about 3,500 Amphicars made in the 1960s. Uh, actually from 1961 through 1968. The uh, car has various boat and uh, automotive features. On the uh, on the hood, for instance, we have the uh, red and green marine light for water travel. And of course on the back of the car we have the marine light for uh, water travel as well. One of the uh, one of the approximately 12 dashboard switches actually operates the marine light, namely this switch right over here on the left hand side. So now the uh, marine lights should be on. For just uh, standard nighttime travel on the water. Another rather unique switch for any car is the bilge pump switch right here. This one when pulled will activate the bilge pump. We shall demonstrate for you here in a second. When I pull the switch, the bilge pump will activate. So in case the car does take on any water, it will pump right out the uh, bilge pump hole. This is just a demonstration, of course. Uh, hopefully this car won't take on this kind of water. So we'll turn the bilge pump off. And the bilge pump is now off. The car has two gear shifts. One is the land transmission, which is a four-speed land transmission with reverse, and a secondary lever on the floor right there, uh, which is forward for the propellers, neutral for the propellers, or reverse for the propellers. One must push the clutch in and push the uh, propeller lever forward and now the propellers are now engaged. As you can see the car is idling at this point uh, so the propellers aren't turning too fast but the uh, car will get up to about seven or eight miles an hour on the water and about 70 miles per hour on land. The front tires actually act as rudders in the water for this vehicle so once it's in the water just turn the steering wheel like it would a normal car and the car will respond in kind. Now notice the propellers are both running in the same direction. So when the car is in the water, it will actually drift a little more toward one side than toward the other side. When the water transmission is on, a little red light on the dashboard lights up for you. So it tells you that the uh, that your water transmission is engaged. This car does have a cruise control for the water, namely that dashboard knob right there. Cruise control is only designed for the water though. Uh, what the cruise control does is it holds the gas pedal steady so when you're just crashing through the waves you don't have to worry about putting your foot on the gas. Uh, it doesn't work too well on the roads because if you hit a happen to hit a hill, the uh, gas pedal will stay the same and you'll probably slow down. Designed only for the water. Notice the three handles on the inside of the door. This is the window crank handle here. This is your standard door lock handle there. And the handle over here is a water lock knob. This is only designed for when you go into the water. It actually snugs the two door seals together. You have a, a, an outer seal on the, on the outer edge of the door and you have another door seal on the, on the inside edge right there. So when you're in the water you snug up that door and uh, you're good to go. Notice the exhaust tip is above the water line and the water line actually comes up to the molding on the side of the car, the white molding strip uh, just comes up to right about there. Lots of cars in the 1950s and 60s had fins and this car was no exception. The only exception is that this car was the only car ever produced with functional fins and the reason they're functional is because these fins keep waves from washing 
into the engine compartment if there happens to be a side wave when you're uh, when you're on the water. There are other various dash knobs. Uh, the one to the right of the keys is a cigarette lighter. The one to the left of the keys is your headlight switch. Um, as you move across the dashboard, you also have a manual choke, which you pull out when the car is cold, and also a bilge blower switch, which is a Coast Guard uh, addition, because one must turn the key on and allow the fan inside the front trunk underneath the horn, which is on the hood there, to exhaust gas fumes from inside the trunk area for two minutes. If you want to bypass that, you just push the button. The fuel tank is located in the front trunk along with the spare tire. And uh, you see how to access the front trunk. You have these little, uh, little, little keyholes. You just uh, lift up on a keyhole and you put your key in there and turn from the knob. And this is the key for the vehicle. Just goes right in here. And you just put it in there and turn and you can release the trunk. Same thing goes for the engine, which is in the back. Keyhole for the engine. And it is a water-cooled vehicle. So your intake air comes into the car here and exhausts out here, radiators right underneath here. So it's a uh, pretty well-designed little car for both the water and the street. All Amphicars came with manual convertible tops. Just uh, release two levers in the front, you unzip a couple of zippers on the back, you unzip the window in the back and uh, fold the top down. This car still has the original Triumph Herald 1147cc 1.1 liter 43 horsepower engine. Um, gets pretty good mileage. Gets about 30 miles per gallon on land and about 1.5 gallons per hour on the water. It has a 13 gallon gas tank so you can actually cruise on the water for about eight hours. And that my friends concludes the tour of a 1967 Amphicar 770.